Hello everyone, we are back with a game review. Dive right in. So here we can see the MMR. This time we are looking at 6.6. .6. So as per usual, I'll just be skipping liberally throughout the recording so we don't have to watch too much dead time. Dragon Alley Mech Naga Pirate. So the first thing I look at is how good is three on three in this one. We have a lot of heroes. I don't think you're taking Rokara or Arana, so it's between the Lich and the Gale Wing. Like we are scanning here to see if demons are in or not. They're out. I think Gale Wing is perfectly fine. Gale Wing here. Okay. Looks like we do have a lever that does affect things. So this is very standard. We're going to pick a card and we're going to take Eastern Plague Lands to discover a 3 drop. Hi. We here. We're fighting Phelan. Phelan. We drop if we take damage don't all right so so far all very very standard nothing out of the ordinary let's uh let's have a look at our shop and then we probably just go to three here maybe not <laughs> wow this is interesting okay so we don't have beasts demons or undead that's a golden corpse surface so you double buy now, you discover a two up next turn, you freeze, you buy the other one, you discover a three, or you get two good minions, and then you level buy and get a four drop after. So if it's two corpse refiners here, I might still level. But because it's three corpse refiners and you're guaranteed to triple and you're guaranteed to get a body that's more durable, so therefore survive and get procs, I think I would take the triple here. I can understand why you're going to three because that's the standard. And whenever you're in doubt, it's easier to go with the standard move. So that's not something crazy here, but I mean, a golden corpse refiner, yeah, I, I, I would definitely do that. And then figure out a way later how to utilize uh, these buffs. Oh, wow, okay. Nether Drake, Felimental, wow. Yeah, wow, this is a good start. I, I mean, Felimental is good here. I'm looking at the Nether Drake. So Nether Drake would give you a target for your Divine Shield. Elemental. Huh. I'm actually not sure myself. I'm evaluating it. I'm going to skip ahead so we can see what's in the next shop here. I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long. I mean, at the very least, this is amazing, right? Like Felimental. Like I think you definitely got rewarded for power leveling here. I'm just thinking with the, um, with the Nether Drake on the board, you have a target for your Divine Shield and you also get... The option to roll a smuggler but i think i like this more because now if you roll Terragosa, it's it's a filthy filthy i think we're looking at our opponent here seeing if we are ever wanting to level so we're considering buying or skipping the cyclone i think buy cyclone roll is fair especially with this uh three and one buff Ooh, okay this is so good we can now evolve our three and one yeah this is getting so outrageously good this is such a high roll start. Okay, let's skip ahead. So let's see how this is uh, utilized. <clears throat> now, I, th I still think on average, it's probably pretty good to get a cold Golden Corpse Refiner, but I can't say that we were exactly punished for leveling because we started off with a Felimental. We're hitting a bunch of Divine Shields. We got an Evolve guy for our three and one, so that's beautiful. Right. Skip ahead a little bit more. Looks like we're losing by just a Golem. That's unfortunate. And then... So we get extra money this turn. So Gale Wing used to be very, very straightforward here where you would always level and buy a card. Now, because with this curve, you get two extra gold, you can either cycle a minion out of the shop or just roll and get a better card. I think here you definitely roll and get a better card. We did hit the Taragosa. Okay. That is still very good. You're, you're definitely buying that here. That's, that's too good. All right, buy that and roll. You could have cycled the uh, scout first, actually. I think I actually like cycling scout first because you can hit Selemental here and bank a free reroll. Um, sell, sell, and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Because you can, because you sell, you buy it, you go to one gold. You sell the main body, you go to two gold. You sell Selemental, you go to three gold. You keep Droplet in your hand, you have a free reroll banked. And you play, yeah, I like that more than just trying one roll. But I, it's a minor thing, it's not a big deal. All right, looks like we're just gonna skip past this. So, from this position, 
you can do quite a few things. I think the the best play is to just level because we're strong. Because we're um yeah, this is this is definitely a high roll start. Our opponent has a giant lava lurker and we don't even care, which is the best part. Like giant lava lurker on the other side and you don't even Also there's a ghost in the lobby, so be very Yeah, I'd have to check them what the Millhouse is doing. So leveled here as well. I think here I definitely like thumbs up the Millhouse and then try to level. But this smogger is it's very nice because you get a free reroll. You get a buff on the Cyclone. But then you have to ask, what else are we doing here? And so right now, they're just checking what's in the lobby. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to see what they're doing, right? Okay, looks like we are going to buy Smogger. We're buffing that one instead of the Divine Shield. That's interesting. There's Peggy here. I think if you're going to stay on four, you may as well buy Peggy. But it's, it's tough because your board is looking pretty good. It's like hard to replace something. So that's why I'm somewhat partial to the level just because... You can then hit Kronormu, and because our uh, because there's a ghost in the lobby, losing the fight isn't the end of the world. The Ripsnarl is interesting here. I think you sell out of the faces and just get the Ripsnarl, because that's uh, that's buffed as well. Looks like that's what we we're considering. Okay, cool. That's the play. So this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. Looks like we missed a roll at the end, but that happens. Millhouse bought some grease spots. Yeah, we're we're definitely stronger. A lot of damage, bonk. But yeah, this this now means that Millhouse can get the ghost and we don't get the ghost. And yeah, now we are gonna level. So essentially what could have happened here, I want to point it out, is let's say we had leveled last round and now you hit the ghost. You just level again and then your hero power here discovers a six drop because you win the fight against the ghost anyway, so you may as well tear. So I think because Kronormu is in, because Hogger is in, and because you're fighting against the Ghost, I would have been okay not going for the Smogger line there. Uh, especially, like, let's say we had Cycle to Scout and we had found the Selemental. Then suddenly you're in a spot where you can level and get the Smogger. Right? So I think that minor mistake might have cost, like, it might have changed the game for like a very big in a very big way because cheesing that early level then maybe puts you in the ghost range and then like you could just go up and pull a six drop from the hero power yeah but i mean we're in a good spot right we had a crazy high roll start this was, was very very good all right we roll here not much i'm guessing we're just going to keep rolling really not much oh we're buying the pip okay i think what happens here is yeah, this is again, I call this like good player problems. This is just, pro this is programming. You have two gold left, you buy, no matter what. <laughs> like you can't waste the gold, right? So you just have to sell a card and then buy a card. So buying pip is not bad because it's a pair and it buffs with the Ripsnarl, but the Amber Guardian gives plus two, plus two to a Divine Shield, and you can just roll into Kronorma, you can roll into Hogger and all that. So I would definitely want two rolls here instead of buying the pip, but I understand why they buy it, right? Is this programming of I'm down to two gold, that's where you sell and buy. That's just a pattern. We've done that over and over and over. You're conditioned to do that. So yeah, that's what you're going to do. And for the most part, that's right. But sometimes it's just better to roll, right? Because you're really not making... A super meaningful upgrade, in my opinion. All right. I'm just skipping past these fights a little bit. We are pretty damn strong. We also have the win percent enabled, so you can kind of get a feel for how good we are. Here we are. Um guessing we're Wow, that's not a bad setup for Nomi. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite interesting, right? Because there's a Selemental in the shop and we already have a reroll guy. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to see what they're taking here. Augur. Okay, I mean, I respect it. We do get that pip. Uh, we do get that pip pair. I honestly don't think you can make a horrible decision there. Even with the jug in the shop, the brand was nice. Uh, wait, what? Who? Wait, what? Did we just slam an Orgo over a Team Master? <laughs> okay, I need, to th I need to look at this. So what is... Is it because we have a Peggy? We're like, yeah, let's go. Spellcraft in the hand. Because it feels like Theo, especially in this meta, is just such a... It's almost like 
a cheat, right? Where you're like, oh, what am I gonna play? What am I gonna play? Oh, thank God, Theodore, I can just do that. At least that's how I feel a lot of the time. When I triple into a Theo, there's just relief. It's like, ah, okay, I can just do that. I can just, you know, buy good neutrals, do my buffs. So we have Divine Shield Dragon on the board. We have some pirates. So something that could also happen here is that we just look at our board and be like, like, eh, do I have good buff targets? I got a lot of pirates. But it's totally fine with Theodore at the start to play like three pirates and then two other types. And then you just sell out of them when you hit a Cronormu, for instance. Yeah, anyways, we'll, we'll see how the game goes here. But I, I think this is the probably the biggest disagreement I've had so far is let's not because i mean we just sold it right like that's that's our six drop I and mean, it's just plus one plus one and get it yeah yeah it, it gives me a bad feeling here so the corpse refiner i think was pretty good but we got very rewarded for skipping it here i think we're just being a little bit too like okay i have hogger i have peggy the blinders are on right blinders are on i don't want to get distracted by anything else pirates it is and, and I don't think that we needed to do that. Like right now we're running into that problem of like, ah, the time is ticking. I guess I'm just going to cycle, get the spellcraft. And then we're holding that in the hands. Yeah, we're selling it. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, this is, uh, we can see that here. Now, obviously I run out of time all the time, you know, thinking about the play. It can be very difficult to, to get the moves in in time. Uh, this mouse here I don't like. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we're moving so yeah that's that's probably the um the big the big disagreement i have here that we could have just had a theodore and then we have a perfectly fine game plan and if we hit Kronormu, suddenly it's extremely smooth we sell all the additional pirate stuff trade it all in for Kronormu, and then um just have some types with a theo but we'll see where we go from here so yeah that that's my thing that i'm thinking about right now is that we just, we put the blinders on a little bit and said, okay, I'm, I'm pirates, no matter what. And that's obviously, uh... all right, so we're selling the Wrangler immediately to then get the free reroll. I don't love that we insta sell the ball because we could hit a Cronormu. So in ev whenever it's a dragon lobby, I don't like to sell until I have to. That's a big thing, right? So usually it's nice to keep your options open anyway. But when Cronormo is in, there's, there's just a big punish for selling stats off the board when your next chop could have Cronormo. That, that minion is just so game warping. Yeah, what's happening here? We just have gold left, I guess. We're on three gold. Yeah, I mean, again, it's... I don't think it's enough, right, to just get that small upgrade from Peggy because... What did we gain here? Like plus two, plus two. Rolling three times for Kronormu, for Hogger, for triples into Greta. I think that's that's way more impactful. So from what I've seen so far, I think it's, you know, I'm, I talked about it already. And we'll skip ahead a bit. You guys can watch the fight as I'm explaining. <laughs> from what I've seen so far, it's like good player problem in that you have this programming of, okay, whenever there's three gold left or two gold plus the gold I'm getting from selling a unit, that's where I will make a play no matter what. And that's correct in a very large amount of cases. That's going to get you to hire MMR for sure. But then at some point, you also need to realize, okay, why do I do that? I do that so that I get stronger overall. Use my gold. If using your gold really doesn't get you much, like it's actually stronger to roll and set yourself up for a stronger turn in the future. So not a super big deal, but I just don't feel like we're getting enough bang for our buck. From the position we were in, our board should be disgusting by now. All right. The Insta, Insta sell. I do like this. I do like this. What this tells me is that they know that, okay, Cronormo is bullshit. I'm pretty much always selling. Let's go. The Terragosa sale might be a bit much because it already had Divine Shield. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this is good conditioning. See a Cronormo, sell your board. I like the HP on the Leroy. I like that too. You, you can tell here that it's a viewer, I feel. Like it's it's very, very similar to how I how I play. It's like, all right, sell board for Kronormu. Give extra health to Leroy. Go, go, go. I'm always doing that. Okay, if we had a spell here, this puffer would be a nice thing to end on. Uh, but yeah, okay. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, see what they're doing. Okay. With them. 
I guess, okay, so what they're thinking is Leroy is a problem. So let me just play Taunts. Are they going to buy the one for or just like an Elise? But again, right, I, I feel like we're getting that good player problem here of I've hit a certain gold threshold, therefore I will move. And this time it was the five gold threshold here. So there's a, there's a number of little rules you make for yourself to play the game and make it easier. So two gold left is sell a unit, buy a card. Five gold left is cycle a unit, buy two cards, like sell one off your board, buy two, or cycle something from the shop and buy one. So there's all these little things that you like shortcuts. But if we look at this board, how like I, I can kind of understand the module for Leroy, right? So fine, like here, I'm not even gonna say that it's wrong, but I think we're definitely seeing that those, uh, those programmings. So like, okay, this is, this is how I play, this is how I do it. Rolling two more times to find a, um, I guess glow skill doesn't do that much because we're already shielding. So it really would have to be Leroy or maybe like a cyborg Drake or something. So I think overall, fair. Buy the module, try to tank the Leroy. But I, you know, that's just feedback where I can see like there's these very strong like programmings of like, okay, I've hit a certain gold number. Now I got to do something. And that's not always correct as we've seen so far. So yeah, Chronormo in the back, I like that. I think the module can move a bit more back. I don't think I want to attack with the taunt, but yeah, we'll see. All right, here we go. Into the fight. We've sold our whole board for one unit. Let's see how it does. 100% win rate. Excellent. Now that Leroy is beautiful here, right? That Leroy is beautiful. All right, here we go. Well, not much, not much to watch here. Sell whole board for one unit. 100% win rate. Yep. That's how Kronormu rolls. Right, we found a Cyborg Drake. I'm kind of okay with that here. Helps fill our board. Elegant at four dragons. Can we easily level and buy that? That's probably what I'm looking at right now. I'm going to skip ahead a bit. It's six. Yeah, we can easily level by. Ooh, okay. So the reason why I'm thinking about this straight away is well, Nadina, right? Especially if you're going to have Cyborg and then another Cyborg and maybe another, etc. Uh, I guess we are thinking about rolling for Elise, but especially against the Ghost, I'm pretty happy with just level by and then you can roll into Queen, you can roll into Nadina and all that. Uh, but, you know, we can roll into Leroy as well and we're going to get a six drop from the Elise. So again, rolling is fair, but I just think you can get away with level by the Cyborg Drake. Gives you a decent power boost and then you'll, uh, you'll have an option to roll into uh well actually i don't even know if the hero power is popping here Ooh, i would just buy the other gambler here because i feel like yeah maybe she's really afraid of the ghost oh here she is uh okay so we really want that monkey okay so i think here we're just not using enough uh leverage right we have a position where we can really uh put ourselves in a spot to try and lock the game uh into a win where if we can get queens extra leroy maybe nadina we can really let this chronormu carry us whereas now it feels like we've sort of wasted our our ghost turn where we're now uh you know rolling to make this elise so instead of going to six we're spending five gold to roll and discover one six drop whereas on six we could just roll into the sixes so yeah i'll skip ahead a little bit again but uh, no, 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 no. I mean, we're on 22. We'd never... Oh, I mean, 2.6% of the time we do die, but... Bad a bit. Hey, we didn't die. Cool. All right. So yeah, these games are all about me just reviewing the player. So I upload plenty of, you know, content that is about, hey, just watch the fights, watch some cool stuff. But here, you know, if it's, if it's not a very exciting fight, just a ghost fight, it's kind of whatever. All right, we're going into the finals. So let's actually go back. I think there was a quick scan of the opponent here, right? Nagas, I think. Sorry, I missed it again, guys. I'm the boomerang. Yeah, seven Naga. Okay, cool. So that tells you what the opponent is bringing to the table, right? The opponent is going to come at you with stats for the most part. So there is a good chance that we are going to see a high health Myrmidon. And then Divine Shields, Athissas, and Buffs. I think we're looking right now like, okay, now that I've hit the second Leroy, what else could I hit? Do I need to evolve, try to YOLO a six drop? We saw Taunt on that Myrmidon, ooh. And it had a lot of health, so I think they might have used Bran with a 2-6 Taunter. 
But that means it's not a temporary taunt. That's a big deal. That means putting your Liras first is a good move. Okay. Thinking Baron, but not. So we're just cycling my Yeah, so I think my feedback here is that we kind of wasted an opportunity to just jam tier six and then roll into queen to just roll a bunch with Elise versus a ghost to discover one six drop. And then now we're kind of like mm. here I think I just like Orgo, but we're gonna go double buster. Hey, hey, okay. Uh this one is a bit weird because you don't actually want more than one dragon. So you could sell your Kronormu and your Buster to get an upgrade. Man, this is weird. I think I kind of like this Taunted Leroy first, because we know that it's very likely a high HP Myrmidon. I'm not going to do any kind of skipping here, though. Like the finals, I'm, I'm more than happy to watch it. But I think it's still a big Taunted Myrmidon, but let's see what's going on. So then because of that, I want that Leroy to go into the Taunt. I don't want it to get attacked into. Okay, well, you know, they have a really good unit to tank here. But that's a super, super high HP Myrmidon. So if this Leroy doesn't end up going into that, that's going to be a problem. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, the Leroy is guaranteed to go there, so that might just be enough now. Yeah, essentially we always, at the very least, hot. That's good news, because we had a very... Uh, if we catch that Lurker with the Taunted Leroy, it's great. Okay. So we know that they have that Lurk. <laughs> Excuse me. We know that they have that Lurker. So they're not going... Well, I can't you know, predict with 100% certainty, but we know that the opponent should probably not keep the Lurker in first. Because keeping the Lurker first is going to just increase the chance it's going to kill itself on the Taunted Leroy. So knowing that the Lurker is going to move more back, adding a Poison Minion further in the back could do some really good work. So that would mean a, um, got the 2-6, what's it called again? Uh, that gives you the, the poison if you spellcraft it. Or a Queen, right? So we're moving Leroy up to try and deal with this uh, thing. I think the Taunted Leroy first is still better, by the way. Because... I'm just assuming what the opponent is going to do here. I'm, I'm really a little bit confused about this Buster side gig we have going on. And we're just rolling on five the whole time when we already have two Leroy's. That's generally not interesting. So I, I would have pushed six at least three turns ago, probably just three turns ago, not at least. So three turns ago, I would have pushed six. And then I would have tried to uh, add queen to the boards because that's essentially what you're trying to do here. Add Nadina, add Queen, add uh, Puffer Quill. That's the game. Because right now, these Busters and the, the Mackerel, it doesn't do anything. Skip ahead a bit here. We don't want to, we don't have to watch the Rope Burn. Yeah, so they moved it back a little bit, but not that far. But it's probably okay. Okay, we hit. That's a huge hit. And then this Buster, mwah, like killing that is perfect. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. We didn't get that much shield value, but I think we um, were very likely to... Are we very likely to kill? Oh, that was a good hit. Now we're pretty likely to kill. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is... Uh... That is a pretty standard endgame board right now. Kronormu, two big Leroy's. Or big Kronormu and two Leroy's, sorry. Yeah, my, my main feedback here is that there are... Um... There are just a lot of little uh, things happening in terms of, oh, I have hit this gold interval and therefore I need to do something here. Whereas you need to ask yourself, okay, even though that's the normal play, does it actually make sense here? You have to quickly double check yourself. Like, am I actually getting stronger here or am I just doing the thing I always do? Uh, once again, at the time it's going to be good. That's why you're doing it all the time. But in, in these few cases, I was like, mm, probably better to just roll. And then the, uh, the other one was, oh, we were offered a Theo. And it's like, okay, that's, that's such an easy direction. We can now do things, especially with Kronormu. And Theo is so nice because you just sell everything you don't want. And then you have Dragon and two more types and you play Theo. And then you can still add Leroy and Queen like we were trying to do right now. But then instead of having those busters, we got two actual minions that have been buffed by Theo. So that's what the board would look like by now. We'd have the... Uh, 
we'd have the double, uh, double Leroy, we'd have the Kronormu, but then instead of the Busters, say, we'd have some actual minions. So that's, that's, I think, the main difference that would happen between our games. Now, for all we know, I actually die earlier because I don't go the three with that crazy high roll where we start off with the Felimental and we buff and, and you know, because our start was disgusting. We had such a good start, so good, and we even pick up the Tarragosa. Yeah, I, th I think there was also that moment where we could have leveled, knowing that it's a ghost lobby. And also because we're Gale Wing, we had that perfect interval where if we had leveled, lost, hit the ghost, level again, oh, you discover a six drop, it's so Yeah, so overall, still, I, I liked it. Uh, the Leroy focus, trading the minions for the Kronormu, like no hesitation, that was commendable. I like that. I think that's experience in the meta. I was like, all right, you just sell sell and assume it works out and that you'd be surprised how often it works out when you just sell everything for so ggs thank you so much for submitting if you guys would like your game reviewed as well feel free to check the description i will have my discord link there like last time join the discord upload your game to youtube or twitch and maybe i will just pick your game to be reviewed next have a good one everyone